applications and inject security into the SDLC. So just, yeah, having one issue means yeah, you need to take a more comprehensive approach to dealing with that one issue. Yeah, it, like we said, yeah, it has to be, yeah, it is a defense in depth mechanism. Um, the next fix is you know, keep abreast with what the threat landscape is. Uh, it is changing. Yeah, we, yeah, there was a talk that was supposed to have been conducted today about click jacking, which is presumably a new threat. Now, how is that going to impact your environment? Um, you know, unless you capture the, the results of your security program in a manner that uh, you, can, uh, you can analyze, it'll be difficult for you to yeah, look at a new threat and see how it impacts your program. So yeah, what should you be doing? Uh, firstly, know how a new threat is going to impact your environment. Um, you know, do you have a threat model that captures that you've performed against your applications? Does the threat model already capture this threat? If not, um, yeah, how, how are the results of this new threat uh, or the results of the discovery of this new threat going to impact your threat model? Um, do you now have to go back and manually test all of your thousand applications for this one particular threat? Or there are only a certain application or a certain few applications that are in fact vulnerable to uh, you know, this new threat? So um, also, what is the most cost-effective way of dealing with this new threat? You know, do you just go and add a new signature to your web application firewall if you have that in place? Um, you know, do you have to install a new security program? Do you have to make changes to your code, changes to your uh, framework? So um, for you to be able to do all of this, you need to capture all of this information. You know, capture the results of your threat model, capture the results of your code review, and essentially see how all of you know, a new threat is going to impact all of your applications. And we haven't seen too many comp companies actually implement a good way of capturing all of this information. Uh, a new threat is discovered, um, they have no idea what to do. And also, you know, make sure that you capture threats and mitigate in each stage of, uh, each stage of your SDLC. Um, all right, any questions? Yes. What? My one question is um, I've run across some people that are using, I guess, a term for it, which is not a double sided error statement. Have okay. you guys seen any problems with that? I mean, basically, it's just going to be default. There was an error page, is all that gets returned to the client, yet the code on the server will fire off something to a bug tracking system or reporting system? We haven't seen that uh, in use, actually. Okay. But it's, uh, it's mainly been small companies that you know, are writing their own stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, I mean, it seems a logical approach, it seems to work so far. I'm just wondering if you guys have seen anyone been able to get around that or cause problems. How's it going to solve um, issues like an HTTP call up, for example? I mean, yes, well, it's no, going it, to create it's a. It's not, it's just, it's, have you found that to be exploitable? I mean, it doesn't solve everything. Okay. But the point is that it basically is preventing all the information leakage while still allowing that stuff to be available to developers. Because the developer is going to basically go to the internal bug tracking system. Consult the reality there to get the data rather than reading off the web page. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's a you know, fairly useful way of getting information. Um, we haven't seen that exploded yet, but yeah, it's, we don't have insight into all of the web hacking. Uh, um, I mean, so you guys obviously a lot of experience, a lot of things that we're going to have to be seen Not that. <laughs> you had a question? Sure. I remember when I first took a look at SQL 2005, I was excited to see they had this. Vulnerability surface reduction wizard, mm -hmm. and they've got rid of that key command shell by default. Have you had a chance to play with 2008 yet? And if so, have they disabled some of the functionality you're describing here? But I just downloaded uh, SQL 2008. I haven't had a chance to explore it, but I know they've uh, gone into some depth to, to make it more secure by default. Uh, it's definitely a better pro product from what I hear. I haven't I'm looked at it. More questions? All right, let's have the uh, giveaway. If uh, there are any business cards in the envelope. Sorry? Oh, it's here. I think there's one. <laughs> Derek Lewis? It's one of two. be here for the next 15 minutes if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you.